Right, because I know that, uh, that Phil is a jazz aficionado. <clears throat> um, I was in Paris with my older brother about a year, two years ago, a year ago, a year ago, and had a particular experience uh, uh, out, in, out one evening where I, I had a hard time with, like we'd go to these bars that were profoundly Paris in every <laughs> sense of the word, right? And, and then like T-Pain would come on. <laughs> <laughs> or like like Dr. Dre's greatest hits, like Death Row would somehow be in Paris. And and one night we found some sort of sloppy little hole in the wall. It was a great great space, and um, I can't remember what it was called. But uh, I had I had sort of this frustration with the music we were hearing, and in my response to it, I was like, Why we gotta come all the way to Paris to listen to Fifty Cent talk about how in the club is where we should be? <laughs> even though that song was popular six years ago. <laughs> um, and I found profoundly, ironically, that I had the same exact experience when the most American music I know uh, came on, which speaks volumes about something. It's called Jazz on Rue de Hachette. Tonight, somewhere in the left bank of Paris, a cave beneath the street is a stampede of human hooves. Swinging, twirling, cotton club finger wagging, they clap the hardwood until it groans like a music that knows its own name. And you, the lonely American, desperate again to prove not cotton stuffed, not wrapper chain medallion, not gun holstered buffoon of the world. Finally hear something that makes your heart backflip with pride. Charlie Parker snaps through a set of ancient speakers by the bar. Bodies swarm the bedroom-sized dance floor like a hive. They twist and kick and spin like perfect Fred Astaire wind-up toys. You think only of smoky closet lounges on 125th or Lennox and how yours, the way their bodies fling themselves across this floor, actually is. Yet there is something different here. The feeling is not what it should be. You should be the first to the floor. Let your grinning, flailing limbs shout yes. But instead, you laugh. Pretzel your cement sack legs around the metal stool beneath you. Turn towards the bar for another drink. Somehow, you are on the outside of something that is yours. Wow. This is the only thing that has made you proud of your own home in days. And it doesn't even remember the sound of your name in its mouth. Yep.